people reacted within an hour. And here's what I wrote. Proving she has the number one qualification to be president, she can lie with a straight face better than anyone on the planet and keep the cat that ate the cream smile. Doesn't that say it all? All right, Government Zero goes out to you. And remember, folks, the book comes out Tuesday. It's jumped to number one under politics on Amazon already, which is pretty pretty good given that I'm blacklisted in the media. You know I'm blacklisted, don't you? You didn't know that? Have you heard Rush mention Michael Savage? Have you heard anyone in the Rush cartel mention Michael Savage's book? No, the same cartel that wouldn't acknowledge I was banned in Britain. Don't, don't blame me for that. Rush wouldn't mention any competition. It shows you how fair-minded he is. When I was banned in Britain in 2009, he, he did not do anything. He did not come to my aid. You talk about Benghazi? Tell me the name of the conservatives in the media who came to my aid when I was banned in Britain. You can list them on one hand. Actually, you can list them on less than one hand. Yeah, and now I protected Rush when he was falsely accused of the drug thing with the, uh, with the whatever was stupid thing with the Viagra. I, I took his side. I've always taken the side of people unfairly attacked. I can't say the same for my competitors. You should know that I can officially declare that I am blacklisted by the American media. As well as Britain, I am banned by the American media. It's hard to believe that a man who has been on the air for 21 years with one bestseller after another knocked out of a Yankee Stadium, they die for authors who you've never heard of, right? Ask yourself why Murdoch's Minions or Roger Ailes' chorus line has been told they cannot have me on Fox News. CNN, you'd have figured they wouldn't be on. Me on. B MSNBC, of course not. But Fox News is your channel, isn't it? I am officially blacklisted everywhere. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. What kind of culture was created in the State Department that your folks couldn't tell you in an email about a bomb in April of 2012? Well, Congresswoman, I did not conduct most of the business that I did on behalf of uh, our country on email. I conducted it in meetings. I read uh, massive amounts of memos, great deal of classified information. I made a, a lot of secure of the phone Godmother. calls. I was in and out of We're the no White okay, House. Okay, we got it. There's nothing in writing and she has buffers, okay? I think it's worthy of playing the buffer piece again from uh, Godfather 1 because this is right out of a movie. I did not conduct my business by email in this age. I conducted it verbally that's what the mafia did they put their hand next to their mouth and use a toothpick as they walk between parked cars and mumble to each other who doesn't conduct business by emails other than someone hiding something but that's irrelevant what's relevant is you have a drugged generation that doesn't know that they're looking at a complete fabrication of a human being someone who has apparently spent a fortune having her face redesigned to look cheerful to the average moron out there. My, she's good. She looks good for a woman her age. She, look at those cheeks of hers. How much do you think those cheeks cost? And the cackle. The cackle that puts the fear of God into a giraffe. It's unbelievable to me, but okay. Look, I would say if I was running it as a movie, I'll repeat it one more time. I'd call General Carterham, Admiral Chagway, go at those who were fired right after Benghazi by Obama because they would tell us whether they were ready to send aid. And what's this? why are we having a Benghazi hearing altogether? You have to ask yourself, what's this about? Why is it so important to the average person? All right, an ambassador died. They do get, you know, in these third world hell holes, things happen. So what's the, this got to do with her? What is the big deal after all, she said? What difference does it make? She said, well, aside from the fact that it's for human lives, but... That means nothing when you're willing to blow up a country and kill a leader for personal gain. I mean, what's the difference with four people? What does that mean? But why would it matter to the, the American electorate what she did or didn't do in Benghazi, Libya? Libya? They don't even know what Benghazi is. They know that she's in favor of uh, the things that they've been brainwashed to believe are important. She's not a man. And those are reasons enough to vote for her. Just that she's not a man and that she repeats the pap of the left is enough. 
I don't know what to tell you at this point. I don't think I'm going to continue with this. But I will turn to Canada for one minute. They just elected a complete moron, a leftist moron, a good-looking leftist moron, if you call that look good. His father was Pierre Trudeau. Pierre Trudeau was a lunatic leftist playboy. A friend of mine is Canadian. He said that Pierre Trudeau ruined Canada starting in 1968. At that time, the dollar, the Canadian dollar, was at 103 U.S., and then the father of this loony turned Canada into a socialist nightmare for business. Uh, regulation, taxation. Pierre Trudeau grew up very wealthy, used to ride on Montreal with a German army helmet on during World War II. He was a Marxist and wrote for the Canadian Communist newspaper. He spent time in the Communist bloc, bloc populaire, helping to undermine the war effort. That's the father. And like the Communists at the time, he apparently believed Hitler wasn't that bad. Pierre Trudeau's son, Justin, was a drama teacher. Drama teacher. He's now running Canada. And what is the first thing that this lunatic leader of Canada, great nation? My mother was Canadian by birth, by the way. What is the first thing he said he's going to do? He's going to push global warming, bring in more Muslims from Syria. God knows what else he will do, but that's exactly what Hillary Clinton's going to do in this country. The very same left-wing uh, platform that tens of millions of brainwashed individuals have been led to believe is important is what she is going to do to this country. So if you want to see a further ruination of everything decent in the country, a further dissolution of your borders, uh, a bastardization of your language, the decimation of your culture, go ahead, make her day and vote for her. I'm totally opposed to her. I won't go so far as to say I'll leave the country if she wins, but there's no way to run. If there was, I would leave. Tell me where to move. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. All right, folks. I think there's one other fact that's worth noting. The chief witness for this hearing did not attend. His name was Sidney Blumenthal. He is the serpent behind this entire hearing. And Chairman Gowdy said that Blumenthal has stonewalled the committee. And he said that federal marshals appeared at Blumenthal's house to serve him with a subpoena. Blumenthal denies that. Gowdy wrote to Cummings the following. Committee staff called Blumenthal directly to discuss with him the possibility of appearing before the committee in a transcribed interview. Committee staff left the message with Blumenthal's wife and asked him to call back. But Blumenthal never did, ignoring the committee's request to speak with him. Chairman Gowdy was forced to use the U.S. Marshals Service to serve him with a subpoena, which Gowdy described as standard operating procedure. And Gowdy's committee released 500 pages of Blumenthal's emails and 1,500 emails within five days. But Blumenthal himself did not appear today. He is the linchpin of this entire hearing. Why? Who is he? Why does it matter? The best article on this was written by Patrick Howley of Breitbart, where it is revealed that although he had never been to Libya himself, although he knew nothing about Libya, he was involved with a consulting firm that was pushing Clinton to war in Libya, and at the same time privately pushing a business interest of his own in Libya that stood to profit from contracts with the new Libyan government. A government that would exist only after a successful U.S. intervention in Libya that deposed Gaddafi. Now, I want to pause right here. Assuming this is all true. Now, Blumenthal has denied through his lawyer that he was on the payroll of the military consulting firm Osprey Global. But that unto itself means nothing. I'm trying to imagine a, a leftist listening to this show, a liberal, let's say, who is a diehard, dyed-in-the-wool liberal, but still in all wants some kind of fairness no matter where it comes down. As they're listening to me talk about this character Blumenthal and his alleged ties to a consulting firm that would have con uh, uh, um, uh, benefited, profited is the word I'm looking for, in a business interest only after Gaddafi was deposed. Does that not bother you? Put Hillary Clinton aside for a minute. Is that not in your mind beyond comprehension of the way a democracy should operate? That the corruption is that rampant under Barack Obama that a man could help overthrow a government just to benefit afterwards? Does that not bother you? It bothers me. 
Blumenthal kept sending Clinton briefings promoting Osprey Global Solutions, according to Chairman Gowdy. And it went on and on. Blumenthal got through to Clinton over and over again. And by the way, Hillary Clinton deleted his name from every email that came from him. She took out the name Sidney Blumenthal or whatever his tagline was. But she got every email he ever sent. She got them immediately. While the man who was killed could only reach her through buffers. Why? So I'll, again, I'll rest my delivery. And I will ask you, the listener who may be watching the hearings, they're going to come back up in a minute or two, five minutes. The hearings are going to resume shortly. Although I think it's a, it's a given that she's won. She's won in the sense that they haven't nailed it to a cross in plain English. I mean, let's be clear. What is the object of a congressional hearing? It's, it's somewhat to get to the truth. It's grandstanding. I'm, I'm a realist. Put aside that I'm, a, I'm an arch conservative, if you want to call me that. I'm really something else. But it doesn't matter what you define me as. It depends upon the situation. I'm a borders language culture guy. I don't know, however you define that. I would say I'm more of a nationalist than anything else. I, I don't even like the word conservative. I think it's overused. It's too general and has it's lost its meaning. I, I define myself as a nationalist. But put aside how I define myself. Let's say you're an average person listening to me. And you, you really don't like my politics, but you like the type of personality I am where I'm a bulldog trying to get to the truth. And you watch this serial liar up there, Hillary Clinton, and then you hear behind it all is this guy, Sidney Blumenthal. How do you feel about that today? Does it affect you in any way? Does it make you want something that you're not getting? Are you happy with the country under Barack Obama? And I think all of this goes to the key question. And that key question, you're going to be shocked when I tell you this. The key question is, what, what does this really mean? And I'm going to give you the answer from an odd source. It's not from my book, Government Zero. It's from the liberal publication, Time Magazine, which I got, I don't know, the other day, October 19th, 2015. I think that's the year we're in. And it's called Exodus. And it shows all the Syrian refugees walking through a field. The camera hard focused on women and children, not the um, military age uh, men who are pouring into Europe. And then you open up the centerfold and it lays out clearly this. And I was shocked that they would do this. How the Arab Spring and civil wars led to Europe's refugee crisis. I was shocked that they would know and they would care to denote that it was Hillary Clinton who brought about Europe's refugee crisis. I would have thought that would have come up today. That's what I wanted to hear today. Somebody, one of the geniuses, former prosecutors on the Republican side saying, Mrs. Clinton, are you aware that your Arab Spring, as well-intentioned as it was, has led to the Europe's refugee crisis? How, do you, how hard is that to say? I just said it in about 10 seconds. Here it is in Time magazine. They trace it right back to Tunisia. In the month of December 2010, protests in Tunisia marked the beginning of the Arab Spring. Uprising the sea leaders ousted from power in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Yemen. Demonstrations largely subside by 2012, but evolve into still ongoing civil wars in Syria and Libya. Now, they don't tell you who, who stay, stay, who were pushed the uh, Arab Spring, who funded it, who was the architect of it. I studied this in great deal, in great detail, excuse me. I'm very excited right now because this is the key point of it, and it didn't come up once yet. That's because I'm not a congressman. I should be on that committee. That's the only thing I would have asked, and I would have done it in 15 seconds. Madam Secretary, are you aware that your Arab Spring led to Europe's greatest refugee crisis? And I would have gone silent after 15 seconds. And I would have let, I would have seen her answer to that, but they didn't ask her that. And because they won't ask her that, I'm starting to get a sneaky feeling that the whole committee hearing is somewhat staged, that they're all in and together. Because nothing's coming of this. This is all sound and fury. It's not even much fury. It's just meaningless. It's drivel. Do you, do you get what I'm saying to you? There's an old saying in politics that I heard many years ago during the era of the 60s that when the Democrats and Republicans are agreeing or getting along, you can be sure of one thing, which is that the American people are being screwed. There's something wrong with this picture. There are not enough fireworks, and the fundamental question is not being asked. Because it really isn't about Ambassador Stevens, is it? It's really about how Libya came to be destroyed. And it's Hillary Clinton's fingerprints all over. Has Hillary Clinton's fingerprints all over it. George Soros funded this. I studied this. If you doubt me, 
I invite you